Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to answer another question. Um, this question comes from Javier. Javier asks, hey Dimitri, uh, what is your opinion about the book called A Random Walk on Wall Street and the Boggleheads Guide to Investing? Uh, they basically say that trading, active investing, etc. are not the most efficient ways to earn money. It's like a flip of a coin. Thanks. Okay, so this is a loaded question. Um, not going to go into a lot of the details on this, but in general, I avoid trading topics because they're complicated and having a straightforward answer isn't as easy as yes or no. But if you wanted like a really quick answer to this question, do I believe that passive investing beats active investing? Um, for the average person out there, the answer is yes. Passive investing is always better um, than active investing. But there's a caveat, okay? There, there's an important piece here. So let's just dive on into the details with this. So the thing with active investing versus passive investing are a few different things to consider, right? So all, not all investing is equal. So you have active investing and passive investing from the past. Um, realistically, passive investing has always beat active investing in the past with traditional finance. Why? Uh, because people are just taking really stupid things like technical analysis. So they're taking like, I don't know, Bollinger Bands and moving averages and literally everybody's doing the exact same thing and they just rerun these and re-regress these and then they look at them and they go, okay, I'm going to make an investing decision, okay? Markets are dynamic. Markets are complex. Um, the problem with making money in a market in general is that once you come up with a strategy, it only lasts for a short period of time, okay? And markets are dynamic not because markets are their own thing, Markets are dynamic because markets are just the final result of you know thousands, if not millions of people, if not billions of people, all making decisions on different assets and investing points of view. And everybody has different goals and everybody sees different trends and strategies and corporations make different decisions as a whole. So as the companies are changing, uh, individuals are chasing them as investments. And so everything's kind of bouncing around and it's really, really hard to predict, okay? So it's challenging. So. It's dynamic and complex because you're modeling people. People are not rational beings. Um, and part of this is, so the whole takeaway from this video is basically that doing analytics on quantitative finance is different than traditional finance and active investing. Quantitative finance has done a very good job at actually making money off of markets, okay? But the point being is that it takes a ton of money to make money using quantitative finance. So this is where another question that somebody asked recently comes in, which is, you know, as an individual, can I make money doing quantitative finance investing for myself? And the short answer is really no, you can't um, because it's not worth your time. So let's just do a hypothetical here real quick. So let's say I go out there and I'm really smart, right? I'm Dimitri Bianca, I'm really good. And I go out there and I create my own theories and my own, I don't know, strategies and all that. And I'm not gonna use anybody else's money. I'm just gonna do it myself. Okay, so I go out there and I make it, and let's say I make fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000, right? It's not worth my time. I can go get a job making easily that. Let's do a better scenario. Let's say I go out there and I come up with some really good strategy and I have a profit and I'm making $100,000. It's still not enough to comp me for my time, guys. It's not worth the time and the effort. You're working constantly to build this, you know, this, this portfolio here, this strategy. And the issue I see with a lot of people that I've talked to that have actually done this, so... Let's take a step back real quick. Another idea is that if you're really smart and you have an idea and you can make money and you can prove to people it's risk adjusted returns, it has a solid kind of foundation and a base and you go out there and you sell it to a bunch of people and people give you enough money to make more than a teeny amount of money. So let's say you go out there and you raise, I don't know, $100 million and now you can turn this into, I don't know, let's say like a million dollars in profit. So now it's worth your time. This is one of the big failures with these funds is that you go out there, you spend all this time, so you spend months and months and months building this idea, which I've seen people do this, and then they convince investors to put money in, and then they do a testing period, and then they trade off of it, and then all of a sudden, months after they start trading after it, it disappears. So that idea that you had that was going to make a million dollars for the year, it lasted three months. So you made a third of a million dollars, okay? And you think, well, Dimitri, that's really good money. But here's the issue is after that third of the month, you don't know it stopped working. So then you keep trading on that. And now that you're six months in, what ends up happening is that you lose that profit and now you're back to where you started. So everybody put their money in, they're gonna get their money out, 
But most people don't do that. They go, oh, I got an idea. I'm going to keep doing this. And then they lose money and they lose money and they lose money. The takeaway from this should be, you know, it takes a lot of effort. It takes an entire team. You need a quant, right? You need a guy that's mathematically driven, PhD or a master's, but super, super bright on the mathematics side and how the strategies and the theories work. Um, you need people that are going to test these that are independent from the guy that's building the strategies. You need people to implement these. So you need to go hire a computer scientist to do this, okay? I know people say, oh, you hire a quant and they can do everything. That's not really true. Those, aren't, those people are extremely, extremely rare and it's better off splitting their time into what they're really good at and then hiring somebody else like a computer scientist to do what they're really good at and to code it. So now you already have a computer scientist, a strategy developer, a validator for that, and then you're gonna need a trader and then you're gonna to wanna to run the thing, the whole division. So now you're looking at five employees at minimum. And then you're gonna need servers and data maintenance and a bunch of other issues that you're gonna to have to take care of. You need an entire team to do this. And then to do this, you need an entire team of strategists who are gonna be building strategies constantly. Because as I showed before, a lot of times you have a strategy and it works for a short period. And then it dies. You have to come up with a new strategy constantly. So the long answer to this is yes, you can make money in active investing as long as you do this as a business. You need an entire team of people, you need all the assets, all the resources you can get to really dive in here and compete, right? You're not just competing with yourself, you're competing with every other fund out there, you're competing with general market you know, dynamics shifting around. It's gonna be a lot of work. And so then you have to step back and ask yourself, is it better to work for somebody else making you know, six figures as a quant, or is it better to run your own firm and try to make your own money? Um, it's challenging, that's a personal decision, I can't really answer for you. But to answer this video on passive versus active investing, for the vast majority of people out there, you're not gonna be doing this as a job. So I actually encourage you to do passive investing. Um, diversification is the key to making good, solid, stable returns over time, at least in US markets. Other markets have not fared so well. Um, so he's mentioned some books as well that are famous books. I will also mention that Fisher Black from the Black Scholes Burton model. Um, he's also a huge proponent of diversification and passive investing, which is shocking I know to a lot of people. Um, but in general, passive investing should be the focus for the vast majority of people. Yes, you can do market making, which is now automated through high frequency trading. Um, you can do statistical arbitrage, but again, you'll need millions and millions of dollars to even get going and get it off the ground. So. I hope that answers your question. Maybe a little too much detail, but anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.